Hello and welcome to the first ever Forever Spinning album review. I had the opportunity to review Brian Altano's Revangelion, a remix of tracks from the popular anime series Neon Genesis Evangelion, and I thought, what the heck, why not? Let me preface this review by saying that I've never seen Evangelion, nor have I heard the soundtrack prior to listening to this remix album. In some ways, I think it's a good thing because I really don't have anything tied to the show or the soundtrack. I don't have any emotions or expectations leading up to this as I've never seen or heard anything about it before. But first, let's talk about Brian Altano. He's been an employee of the gaming juggernaut review site IGN for the past 10 or so years. Outside of that, he also hosts a popular comedy podcast, The Comedy Button, which is something that I've pretty much religiously listened to since I was about 12 or 13 years old. And Brian makes his own music, as evident of this review. His last full-length release was 2013's Misanthrope, a wild ride of electronic tracks that are heavily influenced by 90s hip-hop and otherworldly concepts. Since then, he has created music for his new creative venture, Weird heat where he'll drop a single almost every month that is based on a theme or an idea. Revangelion, however, is his latest full-length work. So let's get into the actual album itself, opening up with the first track, A Cruel Angel's Thesis. Opening up with a spliced and looped vocal track alongside some killer boom bap drums, this song sets the mood for what the remainder of the record has to offer. These super heavy and disorienting bass synths, which sound like something Kanye West would have done during Yeezus or The Life of Pablo, lead into these delicate piano strokes and some orchestral strings. It sways between epic and haunting, swirling the confidence of the beat in the synth with an air of eeriness which comes from the highly pitched background vocals. At 2 minutes and 30 seconds, this track does not overstay its welcome, allowing the track itself to breathe and flourish in the way of its own creation, which will end up being a common thread throughout the majority of this record. Okay, I'll admit it, Nerve, the next track, is just simply badass. These super bassy drums overfill the subwoofers as these brooding and dirty horns fill the background. A kick drum gives this ominous and march-like rhythm to the song up until the song breaks apart into this otherworldly mix of upbeat percussions and this extremely fuzzy and electronically enhanced guitar licks. In a weird way, it kind of reminds me of the Imperial March from Empire Strikes Back, just if it was set in 2050 and not in a galaxy far, far away. If I had to pick a track to walk out into a WWE match, I would honestly probably pick Nerve, just because this song gets you going. Overall, it's one of the strongest, if not the strongest, track on this album. Electronic keys and a repeated bass line of two notes open up the next track, A Crystalline Night Sky. Arpeggio guitar notes blend into the mix along with this light trap drum beat. This track has a tendency to build up and let down rather quickly, which is probably one of my biggest complaints with the track as a whole. In the end, it does develop a little bit more using a string section to evoke more sentiment into the listener. There's a certain sense of anxiety in the track, which really helps add to it, but it is unfortunately quickly deterred by this spliced hay in between the beats. It's not necessarily the strongest track on the album. It's good, just not great. Following in this theme of haunting, Rei Ayanami, I think that's how you pronounce it, I'm not entirely sure, conjures up more feeling of dread through its distorted high strings and piano arrangements. Hitting some very high notes, both literally and metaphorically, this song transitions into emptiness, allowing itself to breathe a little bit more and reconstruct. These gently mixed harps create a fantastical feeling up until the song begins to turn back into more eeriness, almost like somebody's watching you at every turn. It reminds me more of a dark and scary theme from a Studio Ghibli movie if they had made one of their movies like PG-13 or something like that. And while thematically it really just builds on ideas previously established in A Cruel Angel's thesis and Nerve, it still does add new elements into the mix. Not entirely new ideas, but at least it reuses and refocuses on some of the better parts of the album thus far. Overall, I think it does a great job of stitching the rest of the album together as it continues forward. Hedgehog's Dilemma is one of the more strange tracks off of this LP. It is mixed to feel really open, not as compact as the other tracks. And it definitely benefits from this mixing and arrangement as it allows for more untraditional placements of some of the instrumental tracks, most specifically the offbeat piano notes that are lightly tapped in. Once again, it does not feel like its own entity as it feels more of like a stepbrother to Rei Ayanami. But in this case, thanks to the sparse mixing and the ambient synths, it definitely benefits from the continuity established prior. As an individual track, it doesn't really hold its ground, but the placement of the song in the project itself helps some of the other tracks do some more of the heavy lifting. 
Tokyo 3 is more of a slow burner, easing the earlier anxieties and letting the album just rest a little bit more. Even with its short and clippy strings, it does feel like we're finally coming to a finale or a final answer. In the same way that a crime show will lead you through the levels of uneasiness until you have that aha moment where the perpetrator is finally in focus, this song feels like that aha moment. Yes, there still is an aura of danger, but it's not immediate, it's fleeting. Tokyo 3 perfectly exemplifies this uneasiness and gives the listener a sense of conclusion without completely throwing away the ideas and themes that it's built on. But the final track, Fly Me to the Moon, is easily the most gorgeous on the entire album. The sample string section feels like it's perfectly in the right place being spliced to add that more hip-hop element that has made Altano's music so enjoyable. The backbone of this beat with the strings and percussions feels like it just could have been used by a Wu-Tang member during one of their solo project years. Like I could totally hear Ghostface Killer rapping over this beat. And even with these sci-fi elements that are constantly popping up, it still feels naturally grounded and purposeful. To me, this track feels like it was the most thought out on the entire LP. It just truly is a beautiful track that continues to grow on me with each listen that I give it, and it really is an uplifting finale to this haunting album. Overall, this album is a great standalone piece of electronic hip-hop, even without context of the show or the soundtrack. It efficiently conveys the emotions needed to transport you into the world of Evangelion, and it tactfully transitions these emotions into its own individual standout album. While I do find some of the overall themes to be repetitive and slightly underwhelming, it's still a great listen. There does seem to be some filler in tracks like Rei Ayanami and Hedgehog's Dilemma, but it doesn't fully detract from the album as a whole. While these two tracks do kind of slip, other tracks like A Cruel Angel's Thesis, Nerve, and Fly Me to the Moon are its standing works of electronically sampled hip-hop. In the end, if I had to put a score on it, I would give this album a 7 out of 10, as it does lack some of the connective tissues between individual songs, but it does create a great world to step into for 21 minutes. So it's definitely worth checking out. This album will be released everywhere on November 22nd, 2019, wherever you stream your music. Links will be available in the description box below once the album is officially released, so please go check it out. I don't know how many actual album reviews I'll be doing on this channel, as my MO is more dedicated to the history of music. I thought I'd just give it a shot and see how I like it. Um, doesn't mean I'm going to be doing these very often, if at all. So for right now, this channel is still going to be mainly focused on the history of music and all the stuff that went on behind it. But please feel free to subscribe to the channel and help me out, and stay on the lookout for new videos every Wednesday and Friday. Once again, go listen to Revangelion when it comes out on November 22nd. Support Brian Altano and all the work that he does. Check out some of his early projects if you want to. And that's all that I got. Thanks for watching.